In this video, we introduce the new Peter Beamer. So you might remember, I used to have a uh, 525i we called the Beater Beamer, and it was a great little car. I loved that car. It had a lightweight flywheel and good exhaust, so it was an enjoyable daily driver. Long story short, I drove that car for about a year after our video that we made on it, and it ended up in start full with a blown head gasket. So I parked it at an apartment complex and uh, kind of left it there a little bit. <laughs> And a so tow visitor's parking, so it was it was fine. legally parked. That's beside the point. Anyways, <laughs> left it at an apartment complex. A towing company towed it, and after bartering with them a little bit, they wanted more for the towing fee than I wanted to put in that car. I could have gotten another car for that money or cheaper. Uh, so I let them have it. So somebody else has that car now. Or but, it's a beer can. Or it's been crushed, which is probably what happened. It's pretty beat. But, but anyways. With that being said, here, Beater Beamer 2.0. Yes. This is what, 2000? Yeah, it's a 2000 model. I'm excited about it because I love 540s, and this is a 540 with a stick. This has the M62 4.4 liter V8. It's a dual overhead cam V8. I like that because it's it's just a nice motor. He had one and I loved the car that he had. That's so good. this is the sticker edition. I don't know who had it before me, but it's got stick. I'm talking about stickers everywhere. BMW Performance on the side. On the, each wheel says BMW Motorsport. It's got, it's got BMW Motorsport on each handle. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I went and got this car for Wesley in Mobile. And the guy we got it from swore that it just needed a crank sensor, but we were getting it so cheap we really didn't care what it needed as long as it was a 540. So uh, after I got it home and started looking at it, I realized that the timing chain is not turning the cams when the cam is turning, or when the crank is turning. So that's never good. We're gonna bore scope it today. And uh, if it has no holes in the pistons, then we're gonna uh, we're gonna tear into it. Tear into it. Cams come out. Maybe heads come off. Who knows? To start diagnosing the car, we first remove the spark plugs, then use a bore scope camera to look into the cylinders through the spark plug holes. I see valve release. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's supposed to have that. All right. Next. Looks to be fine. Look at it. There we go. Oh. You can look closely, you can see valve reliefs. See the valve, see the white on the valve relief on the top corner one? Mm hmm. I think it kissed it. That next one's the one I'm worried about. That's the one that had aluminum on the spark plug. <clears throat> I can't see what I'm doing. Oh lord. The piston looks terrible, but it's too far up to see. Mm hmm. I haven't seen the hole yet. I'm mean, gonna put it in sixth gear and push it. It ain't got a hole in it. Come look at it. It's got a little wall over it, but it ain't got a hole in it. Ooh, speckles. Yeah. I found diamonds. That's not promising. No. It ain't got a hole in it, though. Yeah, that's fine. It'll buff out. Well, guys, we uh, took all of the spark plugs out and bore scoped it and don't see any holes or any gashes or, or any rods any rods or <laughs> you know valves sticking out of the piston so I'll tear it apart yep we're gonna pull the cams out do a compression check and go from there so here's our first glimpse at carnage <clears throat> yeah it's not good yeah it's not good at all uh if you can see down in here right there. The chain has been cutting grooves into that little aluminum puppy. That's the chain tensioner, yep. which right. is supposed to have plastic on top there. of it. But the plastic wore off and it wore down through the aluminum and there's a bunch of shavings down in there. You can see them. And uh, up here in the timing cover, it's been cutting through. 
<clears throat> you can see where it broke on the other side. That's where the chain snapped at. I don't know what point it was at when it broke, but I guess about right here. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's mostly probably because of this. So that is a chain guide and it's broken. There's a bunch this. more pieces down in there, but there. We're gonna take the front cover off of it and then we'll really know how bad it is. We spent the rest of the night removing parts from the front of the engine so that we could get to the front cover. We came back in the morning and decided to tackle loosening the ridiculously tight crank bolt. All right, grab your extra minute device. This right here is probably gonna take your front teeth, so just know that. Ready? Oh, I came off. Oh, I'm bullying. I'm waiting on you. Don't do that for right next to that sensor. Okay. Oh. oh, hey, did we get it? Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, my goodness. I didn't think that was going to Oh, Lord. Whew. I'm going to try to man up on it. Once we had removed the stubborn crank bolt, we were able to remove the balancer, water pump, and the upper front covers. Then we started removing the cams. All right, guys. So we're just now taking parts of the timing cover off. That's got a bolt in it. I'm sure, that's supposed to go somewhere. That probably goes somewhere. Yeah. There's something down in there. There's another piece. This thing is toast. But hopefully it won't be. I have high hopes. Destroy. Woo! Alright, so we got all the cams except for this one. We're going to pull this one out and then we'll get to compression checking it. Tap it looks pretty good. Cam doesn't look too bad. Everything is looking better than I thought it was going to look, but we'll know a lot more when we compression check it. So our original plan was to take the cams out of the engine and compression check it, and uh, that way that the valves would stay closed, and when we compression check it, we could tell uh, if there are any bent valves or anything, which would have been a great idea, except for the fact that when you take the cams out, you can't get air into the engine, when you plug the spark plug hole. So instead of doing that, we're going to use this adapter, which is what you use to put air into the cylinder whenever you want to keep the valves up and take the valve springs out. And we're just gonna put air to it, and if air rushes out of the exhaust or out of the intake at a, you know, a good amount, then we will know that we have more problems. A good amount. See, this is very highly technical here. Yep. That's not bad. That thing held some pressure. That held pretty good. <clears throat> it was blowing out of the ring, I think. Yeah, it was going into the crankcase. We're looking for a little bit of bleed off. You're going to have that. Yep. But most of that was past the rings, so we know the valves are good to go. Alright, so uh, we took the cans out and we hooked the air to the cylinder. And some of the cylinders were good and it pushed the piston down. And some of them, like this one, and you can hear it, it's running out of the exhaust or the intake, one of the two. I think intake. Yeah. So. We're going to have to pull the heads, but that's 
honestly, it's a bad thing, but at the same time, we get to pull the heads and get to see what they look like and work on them, so there's almost a silver lining to it. But see, it doesn't blow any air. Now we're going to show what happens with a good cylinder. This is one that we know is good. When you hook it up, it should turn the crankshaft. So watch the crankshaft. See that? And listen to it when it comes off. See, that's a much better cylinder. That cylinder seals. That's probably what it's supposed to do uh, in stock form with no vent valves. After confirming that there were issues deeper in the motor, we started removing the intake and heads. After doing that, we found even more bad news. Okay, so upon further inspection, we found a couple of pieces on the block that come off of the block. Some of these risers out of aluminum that come off that are broken. So there's more carnage to this motor than we thought. Uh, we'll be tearing it down and documenting it, but it's gonna be a lot more work than we anticipated, which is a bad thing, but I'm kind of excited to learn about the M62, so it's not all bad. We decided to continue removing the heads since they were nearly off, and it would make removing the short block that much easier. So we're right here now. Nick is under the car. We got the head on a 2 by 4 and he's currently trying to get to, if you can see, there's the exhaust manifold. He's trying to get exhaust manifold bolts off so we can get this head out. The other head pulled out with the exhaust manifold attached, but this one has a steering box in the way, so... We are having a time at it. It's been close to an hour of just trying to get these exhaust nuts off. But we are going to get it. We're going to push through and get them off and get this head out. All right, so we got the exhaust all the way unbolted. We're going to see if we can wiggle it off of it. Get it out of there. Oh, Lord. There's a creeper under me. Oh, goodness. pistons the one thing going for it so while nick was undoing the exhaust i decided to uh take the oil filter and see what was in it yeah. this was just what collected in the bottom of the oil filter canister the oil filter caught a bunch but this is just the big stuff that collected in the bottom that's a lot and that's thick it's not like Thin, that's like got some thickness to it. So that's not good. But at this point, we know we're pulling the motor anyway, so. As you can tell, we were disappointed in the shape of the motor. At the beginning of this video, we thought we could get away with a timing set and maybe a little head work, but of course, that wasn't the case. Although I didn't want to pour money into a beat up BMW, this gives us a great opportunity to learn the ins and outs of the M62 power plant. And while we're in there, we might as well make some improvements. To see that and more, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Racing Rejects. And don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> All right.